All righty, guys. Let's go ahead and get started with our acceleration due to gravity notes. And these notes are really just kinematics in the y direction. And the y direction is the vertical direction. So these notes are going to be specific for objects that are in the air, but only moving in the y direction. So the first thing I want to talk about is the acceleration due to gravity. Well, the acceleration due to gravity is going to be defined by a value. And that value is a number that you guys have seen before. It's going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is just telling us that gravity accelerates objects down towards the Earth at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. So every one second, our velocity is changing by 9.8 meters per second is what that means. And just like we said, as the object is falling, its velocity is increasing. And by increasing, we mean that the magnitude or the size of the velocity is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The velocity itself is becoming more and more negative because the object is moving downwards and it's speeding up as it moves down. And like we said above, as the object falls, its velocity is increasing at that constant rate of gravity. So it always gets faster by 9.8 meters per second as time goes by. It is speeding up at what we would say a predictable rate. And that predictable rate is gravity. So this is the case for any object that is falling in the air. And as that object falls, its displacement or the distance it's moving is changing more and more rapidly as time goes on. In other words, it covers more distance as the time is going on. And again, this is because the object is accelerating. Say we have an object, right, located on top of some tall cliff or hill, perhaps a ball up here. After one second, the ball might be over here. After two seconds, the ball might be over here. Three seconds, and then finally four seconds we can see that the distance the ball is covering over these time intervals is increasing. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's all that number three is saying here. And it's because the ball is experiencing acceleration, so it's going to cover more and more distance as time goes on. Another important thing to know is that, like we said before, this is for all objects. So all objects are going to experience an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. It doesn't matter if it's a bowling ball. It doesn't matter if it's a piece of paper. Assuming there is no air resistance, this is the acceleration that the object will feel when it is in the air. Now let's take a look at some graphs here to uh, kind of recall what we did in a previous unit. We have our displacement versus time graph for an object falling from rest. Well, an important thing to note is that when we have an object falling from rest, so say again, here's our cliff and here's our ball falling from it, we're going to have to label our origin. And the origin, we're always going to say is at the bottom. And it's going to be at the bottom and it's going to point upwards. And why is that the case? Well, this is the case because up in the y direction is going to be positive and down in the y direction is going to be negative. We already said that gravity pulls down at negative 9.8 meters per second, meaning that the downward direction is considered negative. We want to put our origin at the bottom of our cliff or the bottom of whatever we're doing. In other words, the ground. So if that's the case, we should have a displacement first time graph that starts up here and is going to end somewhere down here. Since it's experiencing acceleration, it's going to be a curved line and it's gonna look something like this. How did we know that it was a curved line? Well, like we saw before, we noticed that our ball was covering more and more distance as time went on, meaning that it was experiencing acceleration or a non-constant velocity. This graph right here tells me that after a few seconds, the ball has only gained a few meters. After another second though, the ball has gained a lot more meters. Another second, a whole lot more meters. And then lastly, one more second, the ball has covered a lot of distance. 
Again, the curved line is telling us that our object is accelerating. Because the slope of a displacement versus time graph is velocity. And if it's curved, it means that the velocity is not constant, meaning that we are experiencing acceleration. So let's remember that for velocity versus time, the slope is going to give us acceleration. Since the slope is going to give us acceleration, and we know that acceleration is a constant value, that means our slope is going to be constant. A constant slope is just telling us that we're going to have a straight line on our velocity versus time graph. Something important to note, though, here is that because our ball is moving downwards, we're going to end with a velocity that's going to be negative down here. And because our ball or our object is always starting from rest, we're going to start with an initial velocity that's going to be zero. So we should have a line that's connecting the two dots over here. Perfect. This is exactly what we predicted. It has a constant slope, meaning that it's a straight slope line here. It's not curved. It starts at zero because initially we're starting at rest and it's going to end at some negative velocity because the ball is moving downwards and down is the negative direction. So let's just go over some quick tips and tricks about objects falling in the air to summarize what we talked about. First things first, when being dropped straight down in the air, the object will have an initial velocity of zero meters per second. This is because the ball is considered at rest before it's being dropped. Next thing we want to look at is the final distance for dropped objects in the air, and that's going to be zero meters because it's going to land on the ground. And like we said before, we are setting our origin at the ground, so the origin is the point where distance is zero, therefore our final distance should be zero since we are ending at the origin. The upward direction is going to be considered positive, and that goes along with what we just said with the origin being at the ground. We're going to take our origin like so and point it up to say the positive y direction and to the right to say the positive x direction. We don't need to worry about the positive x direction right now because these objects are just falling straight down. And then the downward direction is negative, which is implied because it's the opposite of the upward direction. Gravity points down, meaning that acceleration in the y direction will always be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Lastly, final velocity for dropped objects will also be negative, and that's because the object is moving towards the ground. Most important thing, that's why I highlighted it here, is that mass does not impact anything for falling objects, assuming there is no air resistance. So if we had a bowling ball and a feather and dropped a bowling ball and a feather at the same time, since they both would experience an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, assuming there was no air resistance, they would both hit the ground at the exact same time. And that's what I'm gonna finish up this video with really quick, is a clip showing you guys this. All right, and just like you guys saw, they both hit the ground at the exact same time. And the reason being, there was no air resistance to slow down the feather. So the feather and the bowling ball were both being pulled down by gravity at a rate of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the reason why they both hit the ground at the same time.